What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Lenovo Tab M8 HD. This is a new Android tablet from Lenovo. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you might remember that I recently did a review on the all new Tab M7, which is a much cheaper option than this. But I've had a lot of people ask me about the M8 HD, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up. The price on the M8 is $139.99 from Lenovo's website. You might be able to find it cheaper on eBay if you look around, but I picked mine up directly from Lenovo for regular price. And I'm really wondering if it's worth $140 when you can buy the new 2019 Amazon Fire HD 10 for $150 and it goes on sale for 99 all the time. 5 volt, 2 amp charger, micro USB charging cable. Yep, unfortunately, even though it's 2020, this is still using micro USB. User manual and your SD card ejection tool. Overall, I personally love the new design of the Tab series from Lenovo, be it the M7 or the M8 here. All metal design, super thin, really nice IPS screen, great battery life, and they've left that audio jack for headphones. Overall, these newer tablets feel very premium. I really do wish they would have started using USB Type-C on these, especially on the M8 HD here. It would have been a nice addition to this premium feeling tablet. So what about the specs on this thing? What are we really getting for $139.99? On the CPU side, we have the MediaTek Helio A22. I actually really enjoy this little CPU in lower-end budget phones. This is a quad-core CPU, Cortex-A53 at 2 GHz. The GPU is the PowerVR GE8300, 2 GB of LP DDR3 RAM. I really do wish they would have added DDR4 here. An 8-inch 1280x800 IPS display, and don't let that resolution fool you. I know it's lower for 2020, but it looks absolutely amazing in this 8-inch form factor. 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, plus a micro SD card slot, good up to a 2 terabyte micro SD card. Now it has to be formatted EXFAT to use 2 terabytes, but if you're using FAT32, you can use a 128 gigabyte card, and I think that's plenty for a tiny tablet like this. It does have 802.11 ABG and an AC Wi-Fi, so you can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, and the speed on this thing is really great. They've also added Bluetooth 5.0, a 3,950 milliamp hour non-user replaceable battery, and they're claiming up to 18 hours of web browsing on a single charge. I'm not exactly sure if this thing will get 18 hours. I mean, it might at the lowest brightness and the sound all the way off, but... I'd say this thing will last at least 10 hours. And it comes preloaded with a pretty stock version of Android 9.0. Now there is a little bit of bloat in here, but you can delete most of it. It does come with a couple games pre-installed and some proprietary Lenovo apps that can't be deleted. But overall, it's a pretty clean ROM. And for anybody wondering, yes, this does have a rear camera. It's a 5 megapixel autofocus camera and a 2 megapixel front. It'll do 1080p, 30fps, but with these cameras on tablets, you really don't want to be doing any photography with it. The front cam will work for video chats and things like that, but overall, the cameras on these tablets are pretty horrible. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Overall usability with this little tablet is great. We do have full access to the Google Play Store. I have installed a bunch of apps here. And overall usability so far has remained very stable, even with 2 gigs of RAM. Like I mentioned, there are a few pre-installed games that can be deleted, and then there's some apps that just can't be deleted, like Tips, Kids Mode, the Dolby Audio Mixer, and I believe there's one Lenovo Help or Lenovo Support that can't be deleted from the tablet. But overall, it is pretty clean here. So a lot of people might just pick one of these up for video streaming, be it Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, HBO, all of that works great. We'll go right into Netflix here. Loads right up. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network and speeds on this thing are amazing. It does have that Dolby audio mixer built in. So if you do have Dolby sound enabled in the settings, then you can adjust the bass and treble and things like that. And the single speaker setup on this thing sounds good. I was really hoping they would have added stereo speakers, but unfortunately it's just a single speaker in here, but it can be adjusted. I'll just head over to YouTube, load something up real quick. As you can see, everything's working fine here loads right into the video. So video streaming on this device is going to be perfect. Keep in mind, the screen is only 1280 by 800, so you're going to do 720p on this thing, but it looks great. Moving over to some benchmarks, on the left hand side we have the Lenovo M8 HD, on the right hand side we have the 2019 Fire 10 tablet. First up we have Geekbench 4 on the M8 single core 865 multi 2529. 
The Fire 10 definitely beat this out in multi and single, but the Fire 10 does have an 8-core processor instead of a 4-core. Either way you look at it though, the Fire 10 CPU is more powerful than the A22 and the M8. I also ran a Geekbench 5 on the M8 because this is what's available on the Google Play Store right now. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it installed on the Fire 10. Next up we have 3 d Mark Slingshot. The M8 does not support Vulkan, so we're only doing OpenGL here, with a 478. And finally, M228, 82,182. I couldn't get it to run on the Fire 10 with this newest version, but the last version I was able to get to run on the new Fire 10, it scored around 121,000, and it beat the M8 in every single test that M22 runs. So in the end, the 2019 Fire Amazon 10 tablet is much more powerful than the M8, CPU-wise and GPU-wise. Let's go ahead and test out some native Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. It works fine with this tablet. I do have fancy graphics off, and I've set it to 12 chunks. If you go any higher than that, you're really going to see some lag and some stuttering going on. But at 12 chunks or lower, the game is pretty playable. Next one I wanted to test was King of Fighters All-Stars. Unfortunately, I'm set to low and I'm still getting some lag here. When there's a lot of characters on screen, I do really notice it, and especially when they spawn in from the top of the screen or drop in, you'll notice it freeze up for a second. And finally, we have Call of Duty Mobile. This one actually really surprised me. This is a very well optimized game for Android. I do have it set to low and I have the frame rate set to low, but it is playable on this tablet. Going into this game, I wasn't expecting much, but it really did surprise me. I was able to get off a bunch of kills in this round here. Next up, we have some N64 emulation, and with emulation on this tablet, it's really hit or miss. At the beginning of this level here, I was really having some issues, but it seemed to clear up and then drop right back down. I even tried turning the internal resolution down with this game, but I was still running into those issues. By the way, I'm using Moopin64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store, one of my favorite emulators, and it works pretty decent on mid-range chipsets. But some of the harder to emulate games, like 007 Goldeneye, just aren't going to run well on this tablet. But when we go over to the easier to run stuff, you can even up the resolution and they'll run fine. Mario Kart, Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, there's tons of games that will run fine on this, but don't expect to run Conker's Bad Fur Day at full speed. Next we have some PSP emulation, again it's really hit or miss. This is Tekken Dark Resurrection, 2x resolution, getting a really good frame rate here, I haven't noticed any drops at all. But when you move up to the harder to emulate games, God of War, Killzone, Midnight Club, this tablet just won't handle it. And just because I'm here, I wanted to show it off. God of War, Chains of Olympus, 1x resolution. I have all the speed hacks on. This is some of the worst performance that I've seen out of this game in a very long time. And finally, some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 runs great. I have noticed a couple dips here and there when characters are coming in on screen, but it does clear up. Overall, performance with this game at least is pretty decent. But just like the N64 and PSP emulator you just saw running, there are harder games to emulate. So here we have Dead or Alive 2, kind of a test I like to run. It will not run it at full speed, even at the lowest resolution. Oh. 
So in the end, again, it's really hard to recommend this Lenovo tablet, especially at the price. If this was sitting at, let's say, $79.99, then it might be a good buy for some people. But when you can pick up the Amazon Fire HD 10 for $150, and like I mentioned, they do go on sale for $99 all the time, this is kind of pointless. It does do video streaming very well from your favorite apps, be it YouTube, Hulu, Netflix, HBO. And I personally love the build quality and form factor of these new tablets, be it the M7 or the M8. I said it in my last review on the M7, I wish a company would come to the table with something similar to this with a much more powerful chipset. Even the older Snapdragon 821 would be perfect in a form factor like this, not to mention something like the Snapdragon 665. Now if we could get something with this build quality, form factor, and a Snapdragon 665, even in 2020, I would buy one in a heartbeat. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you really want to see running on the M8 tablet, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.